Hi, my name is Zach Riley, and over the next few videos, we're going to discuss regenerative agriculture. Regenerative agriculture is not a new concept. In fact, many people refer to it as just good old fashioned farming. However, it's a way of farming that puts soil health at the core of farm management. In this video, we're going to discuss how to integrate livestock into a farming system. Many farms haven't had livestock for decades, and this has resulted in a reduction in the availability of organic manures and less perennial cropping as grass has dropped out of the rotation. This has had a knock-on effect to many arable farms' soil health with a decline in organic matter levels and less biological activity underground. Integrating livestock can be very challenging in an arable situation. It is often associated with a high capital investment. It can be quite a hassle. Uh, and often, arable farms don't have the knowledge or skill to cope with livestock. I'm Christine Watson. I'm based here at SIEC Crabston, and I have a background in soil science. I'm involved in a number of research projects based on the farm at Crabston, where we're looking at the interactions between crops and soil and environment in long and short term trials in both organic and conventional farming. Well, when you bring livestock into an arable rotation, you're going to think about the different crops that that will bring into the rotation. And uh, one of the, the uh, easiest things to do is to establish a short term grass lay within the arable system. And having that perennial crop will uh, immediately bring lots of benefits in terms of soil structure. It will help to build organic matter. It protects the soil surface against soil erosion um, and it brings a diverse range of species into the soil. In addition to grazing perennial crops within an arable rotation, there are a whole range of other crops that could be grazed. That would include grazing of cover crops. So that might be things like fodder radish, uh, which has a, a nice taproot, which will break up any compaction in the soil. Um, alternatively, other mixtures of cover crops, it could include vetch or grazing rye. And then, of course, there's also the opportunity to graze winter cereals within an arable rotation. If you bring a diverse range of species into a field at the same time, there'll be a number of both environmental benefits and soil benefits, because automatically, through having a greater number of crop species in the system, that will increase the biodiversity that's attracted to those crops. But then if we think about what happens below the ground, uh, in the same way that crops have different architecture above the ground, they look different below the ground. So they will root to different depths, they will have a different amount of biomass, and together the different crops can exploit the soil volume better than a single crop type. From the perspective of the arable farm, when you bring livestock in to graze on the land, that will promote the recycling of nutrients through the grazing animal, the return of dung and urine will enrich the soil uh, and help to stimulate the soil biology that's going on within that system. There are also benefits for the livestock farmer in that the animals coming onto the arable farm will perhaps be able to graze at a time of year when feed might be short, so late in the autumn or early in the spring. The choice of grazing livestock species within an arable system will be context dependent because cattle and sheep graze in different ways. There are obviously issues around making sure that the soil isn't damaged and sheep are lighter on the ground. Sheep tend to graze more selectively but the other important issue is that sheep will uh, fertilise the system more evenly. They tend to uh, produce dung and urine in a more even pattern across the field than cattle do. So my name's David Ross. I'm a sen senior consultant for SAC Consulting based in Stenhaven. Um, my interests are in agronomy and um, soil health uh, and also in regenerative agriculture. So as we know, in a lot of horrible situations, there is not the infrastructure of fencing, uh, permanent fencing there as there would have been in the past. Um, we've worked with a group um, through a Horizon 2020 mixed project which has, has looked at this and, and done this in trials and we've found that the electric fencing is as good uh, a, a, a compromise really as having a, a fixed fence. Um, we can now get quite high voltages through, 
through um, electric fencing and it's enough to keep stock on the farm. So when you're thinking about uh, setting it up for grazing, something like grazing winter cereals, eh, as we've got here, um, we've found it's best to have maybe two fields eh, fenced at the same time so that you can graze one and then uh, if there is something goes wrong or if there's weather or, or, or it starts getting too wet, you can move them onto another fresh bite in another field and just keep rotating those, those fields uh, as you go along. You need to have a water source available for the livestock, but uh, unlike, it depends what you're grazing, but in winter cereals, unlike um, maybe on kale or neeps, uh, you don't have to have a, a run back, um, but it really depends on what species of stock you're grazing as well. So through the mixed project that we did here, we looked at um, both winter barley and winter wheat, and we found that the, the ME of the crop was somewhere between 13 and 14, and the um, crude protein was between 200 and 300, depending on what time of year it was, uh, it was uh, grazed. And if you compare that to a normal silage this year, 2021 silages, um, the, the ME's coming in around about 11 and a half, um, and the crude proteins uh, around about 200. So it's actually uh, quite, a, it's quite a good feed, it's got quite a high feed value, um, and it's a good feed for, for, for the stock. So what we're finding is there's greater interest in, 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 grazing, uh, in grazing winter cereals or, or, or introducing livestock uh, onto arable rotation. So my kind of top tips is just think about how it fits into your system. Think about where crops can be introduced, whether that's a cover crop or, um, or a forage crop that could be introduced into your rotation. Or, or think about where uh, the situation might be that you can get crops in early so that you can, uh, can graze them at some point uh, during the year. Think about the rotation, think about how the layout of the farm is and how you might move livestock about and how, how you would fence it. Um, but, but if you are interested in doing it, my main point is just have a, have a go. Find somebody that's willing, that's got livestock, uh, that is willing to to work with you and collaborate with you in, in, in doing this uh, and just crack on and, and have a go.